knowledge. You have it in like a crazy structure. Uh, your beliefs are a network. All right. So, um, when in your mind, when you have like concepts or like any sort of knowledge, you have it in like a crazy structure. Uh, your beliefs are a network um, of connected things, and you know they're, they're concepts built out of smaller pieces. Um, there's like nebulous overlap and all sorts of stuff like this, but like these are the things that are inside a human mind, right? Like, kind of looks like that. Um, but when people talk, they have to talk in just, like, a stream of words to another person. Um, and the way that we have representing knowledge often is, like, either, like, a long-form video where someone's ranting at you about a thing, or, more historically speaking, you've got, like, long strands of text, right? And this goes on for, you know, books and books and books and books which are footnotes of other books and books which are based off of knowledge of other books, right? And, but this knowledge is, um, uh, let's say, poorly structured, um, because, you know, think about any given news article or something like that, you'll have, let me change the color, um, you'll have claims down here, which are dependent, you know, like, they're based on assumptions that were, like, articulated up here. Um, you'll have, like, other other claims that are based on other things. Um, I mean, this is just for argument structure, but, like, you can also think about it for conceptual knowledge, where you're, you know, defining a term, where you're talking about the context in which something is applied, and so, yeah. Um, one thing that I've noticed in terms of the various ways that people, um, well, so, so first, like, this is a, um, this is particularly a problem for knowledge transmission, but it's also a problem if you wanted to paralyze work. If you were trying to get a bunch of people to explore conceptual space together, like, if you have, um, you know, like, multiple people, Right, we're all trying to like. Uh, if you've ever been in a, you know, um, like a Google Doc trying to like solve a problem with folks, it's a, it's a mess. Like, there's a lot of things that you can't write together um, because you know you have to figure out how the structure of where to order things. Like, there's all sorts of different ways in which like the graph can be linearized. This is this is a you know a complicated data structure that you have, and it's dependent on what the purpose of the communication is. Like trying to transmit this thing, this this thing can convert into like you know. There's, there's all sorts of different ways that you could decide which sections of it are relevant. You know, in one context, this section's relevant. In another context, like this section's relevant. In another context, you know, like this whole section's relevant. You decide which of those two to introduce first. Right. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways that you can linearize it into prose. And there's like context dependency, there's all sorts of things like that. And that becomes a problem both for knowledge transmission and for paralyzing, getting a bunch of people to be able to think together where they can each take a different part of the problem, but still have a cohesive sense of the whole. Um, so how does this connect around? Like um, when people write, the notes that they take um, initially are basically just reminders for them of something that they've already, they already have the, the sense of how everything's connected and all this stuff. So their notes are gonna be like single word notes, you know, um, or like, you know, um, so how does this connect around? Like, um, when people are writing just for themselves, um, you know, there's this, there's this, uh, they, they already have this whole context they've built up as they've been learning something. And often what they need to do is you look at how people like, um, so they have, they have this whole context here. I, I could, uh, you know, actually, I'm just going to use this lasso and see if I can, Ter my, my terrible drawing now gets repeated um, over here. Um, so when a person has this kind of context, the notes that they take um, initially are basically just reminders for them of something that they've already, they already have the, the sense of how everything's connected and all this stuff. So their notes are going to be like single word notes, you know, um, or like, you know, partial phrases. And, and these things are basically just intended to be pointers into their own memory. You know, that's always a different color. Um, like, yeah, we'll use purple. Um, so these are just intended to be pointers to something that they already know. Um, and that's not particularly useful for transmission. It's not particularly useful for parallelization. The step above this um, uh, is, you know, for somebody to start writing in like complete sentences or paragraphs, you know, right? And that is what most companies are doing, when, like most of the way that people are when they think about, I'm going to solve this thinking problem with somebody else, um, you know, they're, they're thinking about writing long documents. Um, the problem with this is that any person who wants to get up to speed on the thing, even if this person, you know, basically, they've got a particular set of expertise uh, on, like, a, a multidimensional problem, and you want them to be able to give you feedback on, like, the one area where they have expertise and a ton of leverage on the problem, and that might be this thing right here, right? Or, like, that was a bad, like, let's say, um, oh, I fucked up. Um, whatever, they, like, that would have been, that, that's better. In this big document, you know, the thing that they are, uh, that their expertise is going to be relevant on is like that section. But that section, to, in order to like make any sense of this, they have to read like a little bit of here and like a little bit of here, right? And so when you're transferring knowledge to documents or with prose, you know, um, it's possible to do it, but often the person has to read way more information. All this other stuff, you know, um, all this stuff here is like irrelevant for them and more likely to be like cause of distraction, you know, like sometimes the context, the full context is needed for the problem, but it's a thing that we should be somewhat intentional and aware of, like how much context is necessary for somebody to be able to participate or help on this kind of thing, especially when you're trying to think about paralyzing a problem to tens or hundreds of people, you know, or like people with very different expertise, with very different conceptual knowledge. Like, you know, these are all, these are all potential minefields for somebody who could get distracted or lost or like it also just takes a lot more time so um the like one of the first things that we're trying to you know establish in rome is how do you take something that's written in prose and extract it out into a um a data structure that allows for more efficient allocation of attention um both for transferring knowledge and for parallelizing complex problems that require like intervention like you know interdisciplinary stuff um and that's useful particularly if like you know you want to take a mental model from some other foreign discipline and like that might be useful for solving a problem the, 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 there's a great example of like uh um, Albert Einstein, you know, needed a mathematical language to describe, like, the ideas he had around gravity, and he didn't have it, but he had a friend who knew about Riemann geometry, which is a relatively new branch of mathematics at the time, and that friend was able to point to just the tiny set of math he needed to learn. He didn't need to go spend 20 years studying all of mathematics. He could go study this particular set of, like, descriptive equations, and thereby create the, you know, like, all, like, special relativity and, yeah, general relativity. So, we want to make those kind of serendipitous connections that allow for massive insight and, like, leverage over the world and your problem space more actual. So, um, one thing that I've, like, you know, if, if you were thinking about the progression of someone as a, like, Roman in the team, right, um, the default thing that we should be expecting is that many people, when they think, they don't even take notes at all, and when they do, they're like a handful of notes that are just designed to jog their memory, right? The next, like, oh, shit. Um, the next stage, right? So this would be, this would be like, um, I'll just, uh, this is, we'll call this like pointers to memory. This is what most people think of when they think of notes. It's one of the reasons where like, it's difficult to use note taking as the initial metaphor for target market. It's like, but this is something that people are familiar with. Rome still helps with making the pointers more accessible in more different ways, even if you're just taking notes like that. It does still help people a lot, but that is not particularly useful for um, like 
the augmentation of collective intelligence, especially where you need to transfer knowledge or you need to parallelize things. Um, so the next level that you see when people, and this is something we often see when we're trying to find good writers for the room, is they're at least they're at least thinking about trying to like lay out reasoning in a sensible way, and they're writing prose that is like you know if you read the whole document, like it, it, there's coherent arguments, there's like you know they're they're separating out mentally the chunks, and they're doing a good job of like uh, carving reality joints as best as possible, and like laying out the conceptual states. But they're doing it in senses and they're doing it in paragraphs. And this is almost all primary source material that we'll get in blog posts or YouTube talks or whatever. Right? Um, so one skill that we have to develop, and this is part of the realm you know canon onboarding process, is like the, the gen ed requirement for everyone who joins the team. Um, yeah, and you know we've got like as an example, I'll give a quick example, like for many 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 years, right? If, you know the way that mathematical knowledge was transferred was in paragraphs, right? And um, they, there was a big innovation in the writing of papers when they started writing proofs as sort of like numbered sets of claims, you know, and saying like, you know, like some sort of like dependent structure on, on these things, right? Um, but even mathematical proofs don't have sort of a ability to sort of like uh, scan a logical structure and say like, you know, this claim is based on these two, this one is a separate claim that's based on these two, right? And like these two combined plus this one over here will give you like this conclusion, right? There's like a way in which you can, um, and, and so far, you know, philosophy departments at universities will try to do basic things like um, argument mapping where they're sort of imagining things as just having a structure of like pros and cons and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll visualize sort of like arguments against something. Um, but that also is, uh, this is this is one kind of compression that's doable. So, I'll, I'll, but it is limited in its application for parallelizing problem solving and it is a poor description of reality. So it is a um, it is a, a lossy data structure. It is one where, you know, lossy compression is basically where you lose information in the transformation process. So like there's, there's you know, this, this doesn't handle things like, well, in this context, this works in this other context, it doesn't work. So, you know, argument mapping, where like these two people are using the same term but in different ways and that's why they're disagreeing. They don't actually disagree about any objective fact. They disagree about a definition of terms that relates to some word that's being used in one of these. Like there are many other ways of parsing stuff. So um, the first like part of the Rome canon process that people go through, um, if you're watching this video, then this is what your week is going to look like. Um, the first part of it is going to be like taking a bunch of, to take information that is stored in a, um, like a flat serialized string data structure. It's flat. It's stored basically as a continuous, it starts at point A and it just goes and there's no structure to it. Um, one of the first things that we'll, you know, have you do is like a, um, uh, like, oh, sorry, I should have used the highlighter, right? It's like this highlighting activity of basically just pulling out interesting bits, right? Um, and this is starting to, when you've pulled out those interesting bits into um, new blocks, right? Each one of these becomes their own discrete unit. The first, the first activity is, is just extraction of discrete things. And the uh, the second thing that people do is take those discrete things and start to turn this into a structure that is using, um, you know, like turning it into a data structure. So one example might be, um, uh, you could think about how a question has potential answers, right? And how if you think about a statement of uh, a statement, Right? There's, a, there's a quote I love from uh, um, James Baldwin. It says, the purpose of art is to uh, identify. Right? Um, if you deconstruct that, you could say there's a question of, that's why they're disagreeing. They don't actually, you could think about how a question has, right? There's a, there's a quote I love from uh, um, James Baldwin. It says, the purpose of art is to uh, identify the questions behind the answers we take for granted. Right? Um, statements that we just accept as true often are a combination of a particular question with a particular answer, but those both kind of get hidden behind a statement. Um, which is, you know, if I said, like, Kersey is the best Pope for in-group Twitter, right? This is a statement of fact um, because that is objectively true. Um, but it is actually also a, you could, you could parse that statement which says, you know, Kersey is best in-group Pope, right? Um, if you deconstruct that, you could say there's a question of, um, well, so it says best. There's a question of in-group Pope and then there's Kersey. And so this can become a question which says, who is best in-group Pope, right? And then the particular answer of Kersey, right? Um, if I said Kersey is best in-group Pope because of these things, I'm also saying that you know, the reason that Kersey is the answer to this question is these statements, right? So, so this just is one example. The relationship between question and answers and statements is one example of how it, like, structuring knowledge is its own kind of programming activity. Because you're, you even have to make a decision of, do I write question and answer? Do I write a statement, of, you know, like, as, an, as a statement? How does that relate to how much time I'm putting the problem, how much effort, how, like, articulate I want to be? This, this statement of who's the best in group hope might be easier for you to paralyze or, like, break into chunks and could address one, you know, unit of attention at a time. If, for instance, you were, you know, saying, okay, these are the reasons Kersey is the best in group hope, and, you know, this one is, like, that eel woman, right? Or, like, you know, dude who bought votes best, and then based on traits that I was, or like, you know, the like mechanical monk, right? Um, if you start to structure it in a different way, it's easier to start doing this comparison, and then you might even go out to this statement of best in-group hope, and that can be extracted into what are the characteristics of in-group hope that, are, that will make them best, right? Or like, you know, the like mechanical monk, right? Um, if you start to structure it in a different way, it's easier to start doing this comparison, and then you might even go out to this statement of best in-group hope, and that can be extracted into what are the characteristics of in-group hope that, are, that will make them best, right? Depending on how thoroughly you want to investigate the question, you may deconstruct these kinds of things into, you know, potentially a, um, uh, a larger question like what makes the best and then based on traits that I might, you know, and then I might say, okay, from here, I'm going to ask what are the traits of Kersey versus the eel woman, you know, and how do the traits match up to my idea of the best? This is an example of like knowledge structure, right? Um, so the first stage is to just do simple extraction. The second stage is um, we will give you various like templates of uh, like, so yeah, another another metaphor that I'll throw in here is that the, the world is like, I don't know, the world is like a messy nebulous place of all sorts of things. And anytime you're looking at the world, um, you are, uh, 
this is, this is where that pastor luck favors the preparing mind question comes in, or you could think about the, like, finding historically, like, had, like, seven questions he was interested in at a given time, and anytime he had a new observation, or he had a, a new mental model, or a new mathematical technique, or a new idea from physics, or some other discipline he was learning, he would um, apply a lens over the new, in- he, would, he would basically throw that new tool he had against his existing questions and see if they yielded any insight. And so one way of thinking about this is, like, that there's various lenses you can have over the world that will cause you to notice different things, depending on what your perspective is. And so the second stage of the Rome, like, process is we, we give you examples of these templates, like, I'm going to go through and I'm going to find, uh, you know, the, the, the lens I will apply is what statements in this are statements I disagree with, right? Um, or I'm going to go through this, like, essay or this talk, and I'm going to say, what questions is this person trying to answer? What terms is this person defining? Um, like, what statements of truth are they, are, like, what are they claiming to be true, right? That, that compression activity of saying, someone gives a, you know, someone has an essay, and you just say, well, what are they saying is true as facts, right? And they might not have to, you might have to write new words that they didn't write in order to say it, because they're saying it across four or five different paragraphs, but really, you're compressing it into a different, through a different lens. So the first is going to be doing that. Eventually, um, the, the movement in, in Rome, right, is like, um, so, you know, to, to go back to this, this, uh, um, well, maybe I have to go, oh, oh, oh. Continue, right? So, um, so first we start with having, you know, not just writing notes, right? But someone may do this. We're going to try and skip over this a little bit because we will use existing resources to teach a separate skill that is very rare because there hasn't been a medium for this kind of knowledge before. Many people have learned to write some better than others. Some have practiced it. Um, but like thinking about the, the geometry of the thought, um, the geometry of the knowledge, and what is the, what are the, the, what are the pieces of knowledge that are here and how do they relate to one another? And also at, from even an abstract term, how are they? We will give you geometry patterns to apply and, you know, um, so, you know, the, the, the next stage is looking for a particular pattern that exists. And then um, the, the third one is basically coming up with these yourself. Um, sorry, I shouldn't have used this drawing. So um, uh, the next one would be basically writing these things out. Um, and then the two following stages from that, which uh, Rome as a tool is particularly trying to do, is to, um, in, in the, the on the more technical side, like Rome has properties that no other application has in terms of user extensibility that make it so that you can, with a relatively small amount of technical knowledge, create totally different experiences of interacting with that structured data, of like, you know, allowing you to do things around, like the, the simplest is using the tools we already have, like querying, um, and, uh, you know, like different view options that we have for like tables or, or those kind of things. But the whole purpose technically for us in building a programming language of human attention and using that to create an operating system for collective intelligence is um, that, you know, the next, the next stage is somebody coming up with these templates of their own. The stage after that is modifying Rome itself to, you know, do things like, um, well, I might say, uh, like, my, my statements are all of, of truth are all going to be green, and, you know, I will put, like, red stuff underneath them for things which might refute them, right? That is actually, like, a very easy thing to do um, using some CSS tags that are already part of Rome. So that's something that, that, but as you, like, people develop in their engineering, they can do crazy things like, you know, do things as like a chart or like as like a higher dimensional like interactive space that allows them to like filter through constraints on a problem and see which of the potential solutions is still you know relevant to the, the problem space if they adjust their constraints and creating whole new experiences out of that structured data. Um, but the ability to even think about what features are useful for this stuff requires thinking about the structure of your knowledge so that you can then design experiences that allow you to interact with these much you know these these things are all about or I would say all of uh, um, out making an authoring platform for these, out making an authoring like a higher dimensional space that allows them to like features are useful for this stuff requires thinking about the structure of your knowledge so that you can then design experiences that allow you to interact with these much, you know, these these things are all about, or I would say all of, uh, um, uh, one way to think about all of web applications or like phone applications right now, because it is all just fancy screens, but you, every application, Facebook, Twitter, all these things you use, what they're called, what they are actually really is context sensitive um, information graphics. Um, if you are filtering your, your like, you know, shoe options from Amazon, you are basically creating a dynamic information graphic based on your shoe size and the price that you're interested in, like the kind of shoe that you're interested in, that kind of thing. Um, so context sensitive information graphics, like, you know, MapQuest or Google Maps is a context sensitive information graphic that is drawing you the map based on data that you've put into it, right? And so Rome is about making an authoring platform for these context sensitive information graphics that allows you to explore conceptual space um, the way that MapQuest or like, you know the, the way that um, the way that Google Maps takes all the potential routes that exist in the world for um, you know like going from point A to point B, and it allows you to view just the information that's relevant to use in an actionable way, so you can get driving directions. Um, Rome is helping you. You know, it's it's a different kind of tool because it is 
just as much for the creation of maps as you are exploring the space as it is for just helping somebody navigate. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that is why our Astrolabe is our logo, is because it is one of the most ancient devices used for, like, having a general abstract understanding of the relationship between humans and the stars so that you could create maps as you explored new territory and you could know generally where you are and relate yourself to Mecca or to your home. Um, so, um, so Rome is, like, trying to help people create these maps, and, and this is the scale that we're going to be trying to instill in you and like you know and you're going to be part of as well everyone is we, we do not yet have a map of how like of all the kinds of skills here right and we d definitely do not have a map of the most effective exercises that will hone those skills and transfer those skills and develop those skills and train people in the act of map making and then the act of building apps for using maps right but that is um uh that's the project over um you know the next few weeks